on my first presentation and video on talking about proof techniques. I'm doing a lot of proof technique questions. Proof techniques. And this is something pretty much that all mathematicians need to get familiarized with just because upper year classes tend to be pretty much all proofs um, if you think about the assignments and questions and the theoretical part of it so I'll be talking a lot about the different proof techniques that we can do the first one we like to call direct now we know that most proof statements will usually have some sort of a P implies Q form and we know from working with truth tables we just know from um, logical equivalence that this is the same thing as not P or Q we'll get into this in just a minute and we also know that this is not the same as Q implies P, the converse. We call this the converse. And we know that this is also equivalent to the contrapositive of the statement, which would be not Q implies not P. This is the contrapositive. Contrapositive. I know it's such a long word. Bear with it. I think the other word in some other schools is transposition, but I know from my school that we call this the contrapositive. We can go and do proofs directly, meaning we work from the hypothesis P and move towards the conclusion Q. Second way we can do it something called a vacuous proof vacuous proof and all a vacuous proof is saying is because we know that because we know that not p not p or q is the same as p implies q we can say that if if p is false this initial condition this 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 part here is false then a double negative is going to be a true statement and in order for not P or Q to be true only one of them has to be true and in this case the statement would be true if either not P is true or Q is true so the vacuous proof shows that if P is false which would create a double negative then this would be then this would be true second type and I'll explain these more as I do examples um, soon. And the next type is a trivial, a trivial, a trivial proof. Similar logic as the vacuous proof, we know that not P or Q is the same as P implies Q. So for the statement to be true, we can look at this side now, Q. If Q is true, if the, if the conclusion is true, then it doesn't matter what the hypothesis is saying, because the statement will be true. So the trivial proof just involves you looking at the hypothesis to see if it's true, and the vacuous proof lets you look at the hypothesis. The, the trivial proof lets you look at the conclusion to see if it's true, the vacuous proof lets you look at the hypothesis to see if it's false. Okay, know the differences. We're also going to have Proof by contra proof by contrapositive proof by contrapositive contrapositive and you know that the contrapositive of P implies Q is going to be not Q implies not P and they are equivalent if you run through a truth table and actually verify that for yourself or if you just use logical equivalence in simplifying the statement, you'll realize that both of them are the same thing. So if P implies Q is a difficult statement to prove at first, you can work your way you could work your way this way where you would assume the negative of the conclusion implying the negative of the hypothesis. And this is something that's 
definitely useful when you start working with theorems. In fact, I used it today when um, working with a series, with a series proof in calculus. And another proof that we like to do, that this is the one that seems to really uh, get a lot of people angry, is proof by contradiction. Proof by contradiction. And you can just tell that this this one is used a lot, especially when you have things like, say, proving root 2 is irrational. Examples include prove root 2 is irrational. And I'll explain sort of the methodology that you would take to work with this. So the proof by contradiction basically says you're going to assume you're going to assume you're, you're basically going to assume p implies not q and then you'll establish you'll establish some contradiction halfway when you're working with it. I'll keep doing more examples to sort of um, provide you with a better understanding and more intuition on how this works but um, this is going to be my first video which will just provide an outline and you'll basically establish a contradiction once you work with p implies not q and because the contradiction exists you can only say that it'll work for only p implies q and therefore the statement must be true so when working with the statement prove that root 2 is irrational you can assume that root 2 is rational and that root and then you would put it you would express it in some form of a divides b um, where a and b are in lowest terms and b a and b are integers such that b is non-zero I'll do more examples as time goes by but this is sort of a general outline on the proof techniques that I'll be covering there are some more like proof by cases which I won't go into as much because they're not usually problems that are assigned to many students but please I strongly suggest you to keep watching the videos that I'm going to be making which will which should be able to help a lot with students questions and these are going to be the techniques direct proofs vacuous proofs trivial proofs contrapositive and contradiction thank you for watching